When archaeologists uncover beams from 800-year-old barns, cloister walls, bridges, and even shipwrecks that still hold their shape, people often assume the wood must have been preserved in a special environment, but in many cases, the real explanation lies in an almost forgotten medieval technique, an anti-rot treatment so effective that preserved timber has survived floods, fires, insects, and centuries of weathering. This wasn't magic or alchemy. It was a carefully engineered process based on observation, tradition, and hard-earned experience, and it made medieval wood last so long that modern builders still struggle to match it. Medieval craftsmen did not simply cut whatever wood was available, they followed strict rules, often rooted in folklore but backed by solid science. They preferred winter-felled trees when sap was at its lowest, slow-grown oak, chestnut, or pine from high, windy ridges. Trees with narrow growth rings, which indicated denser fibers. Timber harvested during a waning moon, believed to resist insects. Modern forestry research shows why these choices worked. Winter felled and slow-grown wood contains fewer sugars, tighter grain, and higher tannin or resin levels, exactly the traits that naturally prevent decay. One of the most effective and mysterious medieval anti-rot practices was steeping, long-term soaking of timber in water, bogs, or mineral-rich pits. This was done intentionally and not by accident. Builders placed beams in rivers or ponds for months, sometimes even years, before use. So, why did this method actually work? Well, it's all about tannin exchange. Water draws out the sugars that fungi usually feed on and swaps them for tannins and minerals, which end up hardening the wood. Plus, steeping the wood in low oxygen water provides something called anaerobic protection. This kind of environment kills off bacteria and fungal spores that might otherwise be living inside the wood. Over time, minerals slowly work their way into the wood fibers, causing a process known as cellular transformation. This creates a kind of semi-fossilized structure, making the wood super-resistant to rot, sometimes for centuries. In fact, some of the best-preserved medieval foundations across Europe were built from water-soaked oak. Amazingly, many of these are still standing strong after somewhere between 500 and 800 years. You know, long before modern builders rediscovered the benefits of Shosugi Ban, medieval carpenters across Europe were already lightly charring the surface of wood to toughen it. This thin char layer did quite a bit actually. It repelled insects, shed water, resisted fungus, prevented ultraviolet deterioration, and even protected from minor fire damage. Medieval farmers used this technique on fence posts, bridge timbers, and even roof beams. Archaeologists have found charred medieval posts in Scandinavia, Germany, and Britain that are still structurally sound today, even after centuries in soil. Medieval anti-rot treatments leaned heavily on natural substances. Builders applied thick, sticky layers of pine tar, beeswax, linseed oil, walnut oil, animal fats, or even marrow. When warmed and brushed onto wood, these materials seeped deep into the grain, forming a waterproof barrier that fungi and insects just avoided. So, oak beams in 13th century churches were often coated with tar inside attic spaces, and, you know, many of these beams have actually survived untouched by moisture damage. Pitching, which means coating wood with boiled resin, also became pretty common in shipyards. Viking shipbuilders used this technique earlier, but, well, medieval craftsmen refined the recipe by adding things like ash, charcoal dust or even herbs to increase waterproofing. One of the biggest anti-rot advantages medieval builders had was their reliance on oak, especially in northern and central Europe. Oak contains high levels of tannic acid, which is a natural antifungal and antibacterial compound. When combined with steeping, charring, or oiling, this created an incredibly durable material. Oak beams in medieval buildings often last 500 to 1,000 years because the tannins create a hostile environment for rot-producing organisms. Chestnut, also rich in tannins, became the preferred choice for vineyards in Italy and France for the same reason. 
you know, some chestnut posts used way back in the Middle Ages are actually still in the ground today, hard as stone. Techniques matter just as much as treatments. Builders would design structures specifically to minimize moisture exposure. Deep overhangs helped to shed rain. Raised foundations kept beams off the soil. Mortise and tenon joinery reduced splitting. There were ventilation gaps in barns and halls, and lime wash coatings wicked water away from timber frames. Medieval buildings weren't just sturdy, they were cleverly engineered to keep wood dry and breathing. Some preservation benefits came from customs that had spiritual meanings but practical outcomes, for example, anointing beams with holy oils provided moisture-resistant coatings. Rubbing fresh-cut ends with salt killed bacterial growth. Burning herbs beneath drying beams infused them with antimicrobial smoke. In many villages, these rituals were insisted upon not just for tradition, but because, well, everyone knew the wood lasted longer afterward. Modern lumber fails faster than medieval timber because, honestly, plantation wood grows too quickly, with weak fibers, chemical preservatives don't penetrate deeply, timbers are dried rapidly, causing internal cracking, resin-rich old-growth trees are rare, and builders avoid natural treatments for cost and regulation reasons. So, the result, modern wood, you know, often lasts about 20 to 40 years, while medieval wood, treated with nothing synthetic at all, can actually survive for half a millennium. What medieval craftsmen created wasn't magic really, it was this perfect blend of biology, chemistry, engineering, and tradition. Their wood lasted because they studied nature, respected seasonal rhythms, and used techniques that, honestly, strengthened timber from the inside out. Today, as builders look for sustainable, chemical-free preservation methods, those medieval anti-rot secrets are making a comeback, and as it turns out, sometimes the old ways may still be the best.